We now want to focus on the most vulnerable among us, the youngest victims. This heartbreaking story is about a seven-year-old Colorado girl named Olivia Grant. She died from abuse in August of 2017. Authorities believe the little girl was perfectly healthy when she was admitted to the hospital over 1,000 times and had over 25 surgeries. The accused? Her mother. The authorities believe that Kelly Turner pretended her daughter was sick and convinced doctors to perform procedures. Her motive? Why, to cash in on donations, of course, and bask in attention from television appearances until this little girl died. That mother is now sentenced to 16 years in prison. Our affiliate KOAA has more on this story. Sister Finger, Sister Finger, where are you? She was a loving child, had a great imagination. She loved to talk and just just loved life, you know? She loved life. Lonnie Gotro is Olivia's step-grandfather. When Olivia was just two years old, her mother, Kelly Renee Turner, up and left Texas with her two daughters and came to Colorado. But that didn't stop Lonnie and his wife from coming to visit when they could. She loved watching movies, and she could watch a movie one time, and the next time she watched it, she could be saying word for word what the characters were saying. That's, that's just how smart she was, you know. Olivia's medical records provided a roadmap for prosecutors. In 2012, Olivia was taken into Children's Hospital Colorado's Anschutz Medical Campus in Aurora for the first time. Her mother claimed Olivia was having trouble digesting food and was constipated. Doctors addressed the issue by removing a hardened stool from her colon. But as time went on, Kelly kept bringing Olivia back, claiming she was unable or unwilling to eat normally. We had no reason to believe that what Kelly was telling us was not true because to us she was in the best care she could be under. In 2014, Olivia went in for surgery. Doctors rerouted her small intestine to bypass her large intestine so that waste went into a bag through a hole in her stomach. The surgery relieved the constipation, but Turner continued reporting that Olivia was still having digestive problems. In less than a year, Olivia had three different types of feeding tubes installed. And when Turner said her daughter could not tolerate being fed that way, doctors installed a tube to send nutrition through her veins, a process known as TPN. During the time Olivia was at Children's Hospital, Turner convinced doctors to prescribe her daughter Kepra, an anti-seizure medication. This despite medical reports showing doctors never actually witnessed Olivia suffering from a seizure. For years, doctors continued treating Olivia, based heavily on statements Turner was telling them. Then in 2017, Olivia's mother made a do not resuscitate request to the hospital and told staff that she wanted to stop Olivia's TPN, the tube that was sending all of her nutrition through her veins. Doing so would kill Olivia. Some medical staff opposed the do not resuscitate order, and when that happened, hospital staff assigned Olivia a new doctor who agreed to sign off on the order. Olivia was discharged, went into hospice care, and died less than three weeks later. Two days before she died, I was in hospice, and I was holding her little hand, and she was on these heavy narcotics, and the only thing they were giving her was popsicle juice, you know, and, and toward the end, on a sponge even. And I was holding her hand, and she opened her eyes, and she recognized me immediately and says, Papa, I'm hungry. At the time, Lonnie said he was mad at this mysterious set of illnesses taking his granddaughter's life. Then, a year and a half later, Olivia's mother is charged with her death, multiple doctors on record telling investigators they believe Olivia was never terminally ill to begin with. Lonnie says that made him sick to his stomach. That put another dagger in my heart. What was she thinking when I didn't do anything? You know, her mother said take a little popsicle juice on the sponge and put it on her lips and stuff, you know? But what was she thinking of me not giving her food or feeding her, you know? 
And that haunts me every single night since I found out she was not terminally ill and she wasn't even sick and they tortured her for five years. It haunts me every single night. Still with me, attorneys Karen Felicia Nance and Dr. Tracy A. Pearson. I want to ask both of you, and I'm going to tell you, I've tried cases against parents as a special assistant attorney general who had di been diagnosed with this. Munchausen by proxy is one name, and what it means is that parents think about when you take a child to the doctor, it's self-reporting, right? You're telling the doctor, this is what's wrong with my child, and to an extent, they have to rely on that information. This can be a real diagnosis, so let me ask you first if I could Tracy your thoughts when you hear a story like this and this beautiful little girl now gone well I too have had cases where I've represented the best interest of a child in in these circumstances and I can tell you my my after hearing that um, all of the guardrails that that were in, should have been in place to protect this child like hospital risk management bioethics committees and 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 doctors who were looking out for the interest of this child failed her um, never mind the fact that that the mother engaged in the behavior that she did but it's just absolutely heartbreaking she only got 16 years Karen and it really uh, flies all over me just to be quite honest that she only got 16 years and this little girl is now dead as a result of her actions but Karen I know you also advocate for children in your jobs what are your thoughts it's it's just a travesty and it's really hard because there are parents that that really do care for their children obviously i would say 99 percent of them right and so then we have these isolated cases hopefully they're not more a lot more out there like this one but they're there it's very difficult right to be a single parent if that is the case um a lot of times and then trying to make sure that you do all the things that you can to care for the child. And so then we have the situation as, Cher uh, as Tracy mentioned, there should be safeguards in place by the medical community to, to look out for these things. But I think that uh, all of these systems, the social services systems, medical uh, uh, institutions are so overwhelmed and they have to rely to a great extent on the parents and the caregivers. And, uh, you know, what do you think of the sentence? Let me ask you, Karen, I know that you're going to have to leave us in the last 15 seconds, 16 years for this mother. Appropriate or not from I, your perspective? Not appropriate. Not appropriate at all. She needed a lot more time. All right. That's Definitely what I think. Incarcerated. Yeah, I, I think so too, Karen, and this little girl no longer with us. But I want to thank you, Karen, Felicia, and Nance for joining us today. I always appreciate all of your expert analysis.